Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In one of the previous videos, we discussed what's called the biotin cycle. And this is a cycle where human beings and other mammals who cannot make biotin themselves can take biotin that they obtain through the diet and ligate it onto specific proteins that might require it as a coenzyme. So remember the overall function of biotin by itself is very limited. What it has to do is it has to be enzymatically attached to a protein or an enzyme like this one right here. And then you have this little arm right here that now is attached to the enzyme. And then this biotin is kind of floating out here. And then the biotin can do various things in terms of the mechanism of the enzyme. So it can be used to attach carboxyl groups to things, among other functions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to explore the biosynthetic pathway for biotin. So what's important to realize here is that mammals cannot synthesize biotin. We do not have the enzymes to do so. So any mammal is going to have to obtain biotin through the diet. Now there is a trace amount of biotin that you can get through the bacteria that reside in your intestines. So microfloral bacteria. But in order to have enough of this to avoid becoming sick, you have to obtain some of this through the diet, most of it in fact. So we're gonna focus here on the biosynthesis of biotin and you can see its chemical structure right here. Now the biosynthetic pathway for biotin spans two cellular compartments here in these bacteria. So out here is the periplasm and in here is the cytoplasm. So right here, this membrane in pink, this represents the inner membrane of the bacteria. Now, you could imagine that the limit of the screen, so out here, would be the outer membrane. And so everything within the outer and inner membranes of the bacteria is the periplasmic space. So all of these reactions right here take place in the periplasm, and then this metabolite, which we'll look at in just a second, can be transported into the cytoplasm of the bacteria, and then transformed into biotin, which can then be used by the bacteria, but of course, different organisms are going to consume these bacteria in some form or fashion. And then that biotin literally just travels up the food chain to the point where you get to humans and other mammals who might be carnivorous. And so they're going to eat other organisms which have already obtained that biotin. And then that biotin is going to travel up the food chain to the highest point, which is probably humans or some other kind of super predator. Of course, originally the biotin is going to be made in bacteria or plants for that matter, and herbivores eat those and maybe carnivores eat those, and that's how we get it. Okay. Now really to generate biotin, we have to generate this molecule right here. This is called pimeloweal ACP. Uh, this molecule is literally just a fatty acid, a very short fatty acid called pimelate that's been bound to this ACP through a sulfoester linkage like this. Okay, ACP is just a carrier for fatty acids. Okay, And so we're going to use that carrier in order to transport this somewhat hydrophobic fatty acid through a watery medium. And ACP serves a very similar function to coenzyme A, which you see down here. And in order to generate this pimeloweal ACP, we have to use one of two starting sources. We can either use malonyl-CoA, which is down here. Uh, this is ultimately derived from acetyl-CoA. We can form pimeloweal ACP through this pimelate monomethyl ester, which is fairly similar to this molecule up here, pimeloweal ACP. The main differences are that, first of all, this carboxyl group right here has been methylated. You can see this O-methyl group right here on the monomethyl ester. And then on this side, you can clearly see that this ACP sulfur has been hydrolyzed away just spontaneously through existing in a watery medium for some time. Eventually, if you let this molecule just sit around, kinetically speaking, eventually this bond will be hydrolyzed. So this is more or less kind of a waste product of pimeloweal ACP, but it can be reprocessed into pimeloweal ACP. And we're going to talk about that short pathway first. So pimelate monomethyl ester can be converted into pimeloweal ACP methyl ester through the action of this enzyme AAAS. Now this is just the gene name for the enzyme. Uh, we don't really care so much about the enzyme itself, but what it literally is, is it just ligates this carbonyl right here, this carbon specifically where my mouse is, to ACP sulfur. Okay, so you can see there, uh, we've removed this OH right here on the carboxyl and we've turned it into a thioester, okay, right here. 
So now we have pimeloweal ACP methyl ester. This can be converted into pimeloweal ACP by removal of this methyl group from this oxygen of the carboxyl over here. Okay, so this ester will hydrolyze, will remove the methyl group, and then you'll get pimeloweal ACP. And the enzyme that catalyzes this is called BioH. Um, a lot of times when you're looking at bacterial pathways, so pathways that are unique to bacteria like this one, instead of talking about the name of the enzyme, like some fancy term like phosphofructokinase or something like that, you'll just use some enzymes that bear the name of whatever you're biosynthesizing. So we're synthesizing biotin. So we see bio, and then it'll give a letter, usually based on the order in which it was discovered. So this enzyme was clearly discovered a little bit later than these others. But this is just one enzyme in biotin synthesis, okay? But what it does is it just hydrolyzes off that methyl group, and now we have pimeloweal ACP. Now coming from the bottom, we can also synthesize that pimeloweal ACP through malonyl-CoA. Now, of course, that's generated through acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase generates this molecule, malonyl-CoA. And then we have another enzyme specific to biotin synthesis called BioC. This is probably the third one discovered. And it's going to methylate this carboxyl group over here on the right side. So you can see there a methyl group added, and the methyl donor is, as we would expect, s methionine. And that gives us uh, malonyl-CoA methyl ester. It's also worth noting that depending on the species, this coenzyme A in both of these cases can actually be ACP. Okay? It depends on the species and how they do the pathway specifically, but this coenzyme A can be ACP as we see up here. Now, here we have malonyl-CoA methyl ester. This sequence of reactions right here, we won't go into too much, but it's basically just repetitive catalysis by fatty acid synthase. This is just an enzyme that lengthens fatty acid chains. So you can see here that instead of there being one carbon between these two carbonyls, now we have one, two, three, four, five. So we've actually lengthened it by four carbons. And that gives us this pimeloweal ACP methyl ester, and we already said that BioH is gonna hydrolyze off that methyl group on this ester over here, and that gives us pimeloweal ACP. Now this entire half of the pathway occurs in the periplasmic space, or if we're talking about the fluid, the periplasm. This pimeloweal ACP has to be transported into the cytoplasm of the cell. So this actually, believe it or not, is the deepest part of the cell. Okay? It's the most internal. It's kind of unusual to think about when, because we normally are used to thinking about human cells and the deepest part of there would probably be the mitochondrial matrix. But in bacteria, they don't have a mitochondria. So this is the cytoplasm, the deepest part. So now we have pimeloweal ACP here in the cytoplasm, and we're gonna get a bunch of these uh, biotin synthetic enzymes in order to synthesize biotin. The first one is BioF. What this one is going to do is it's going to remove this ACP sulfur right here, and it's basically just going to attach onto it um, the alpha carbon of alanine, as you can see right here. So here's more or less the alpha carbon of alanine. You see the methyl group, which is the R group of alanine. You see the amine, and you see the alpha hydrogen. Those have essentially been added on to this carbon atom right here, and that gives us this molecule called 7-keto-8 amino pelargonic acid. The next enzyme we're going to see is called BioA. This is probably the first one discovered. This one's going to use s methionine, but it's going to use it in an unusual manner. So what it's actually going to do, instead of transferring a methyl group, it's going to use SAM to actually transfer an amino group. Notice here that we see a carbonyl right here at this position. It's been replaced with an amine. And so in some cases in bacteria, you're going to have these weird reactions of s methionine, in which case you're going to transfer this amine group. And that gives us this molecule, 7,8-diaminyl pelargonic acid. That's catalyzed by BioA. The next enzyme in sequence is BioD. This is going to use ATP and carbon dioxide to actually attach a carbonyl between these two nitrogens right here. So again, remember in this previous molecule in the pathway, we had two amines. What we're actually gonna see here is a carbonyl inserted between them, and then that carbon of the carbonyl is gonna have a bond to both of these nitrogens. What that effectively does is creates a cyclic structure right here, and we know that that's characteristic of biotin. 
at least it has one, we're going to need to put in a second ring also because biotin is a bicyclic structure. So bio D puts in the first ring and then this molecule is called dethiobiotin. It's called dethiol because it has not yet been thiolated, meaning you're going to have to put on the sulfur right here which is going to complete that second ring to make it bicyclic and that reaction is catalyzed by bio B. Now again, we're going to be using s methionine, but we're going to be using it in another bizarre manner, uh, different than what we saw up here for bio-A. This one is actually going to use s methionine and transfer the sulfur from that. And so coming off of this carbon right here where my mouse is, we're going to attach a sulfur. And then that sulfur is going to attach to this carbon right here. And so now what we have is the sulfur in red attached to that carbon and then also attached to this one over here. And because now we've made a second cyclic region, we have a bicyclic compound and that is characteristic of biotin. And this biotin can be used by the bacteria, but of course in some form or fashion, some kind of herbivore or some kind of animal like that's gonna consume that bacteria and then maybe some kind of predator eats that organism and so on and so forth. And so the biotin will then propagate up the food chain. And so then when we consume biotin and we get it in our diets, we can then ligate it to certain proteins so that they can catalyze their functions and do their reactions. And we talked about the biotin cycle in a previous video, so go check that out. But hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the biosynthetic pathway for biotin, also called B7, I should probably mention that. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.